Hello, I'm Jagannath, and you're watching The Natural Farmer. Okay, so this is the Barefoot Gardener video, Barefoot Gardening, right? Um, I named it that because if you can walk around your garden barefoot when you couldn't before, then that is a huge sign of a change, okay? And there are a number of people I've heard from out in our uh, kind of community who've told me that they've already gone through this transition. So this video is for you as well, okay? Because we have been able to transition to become barefoot gardeners out here where it wasn't possible before, okay? Because as I'm going to show you, we used to have a huge population of woody stemmed, um, uh, what are they? They're clover. They're basically like a, uh, like a wild clover with these little pink buzz ball kind of flowers. And they call them touch me nots here locally. And you think, ah, oh, they call them touch me nots because the leaves, they kind of like fold up when you touch them, right? Like they, you know, they respond like a Venus fly, fly trap. They, they move, right? but they call them also touch me nots because they're thorny as hell. So you don't want to touch them because they're very um, aggressive weed and they'll hurt you and they'll scrape you and you know, they'll give you an infection and whatever. So um, I'm happy to report though, that this garden now is a barefoot garden in our zone one and our zone two. And I'll show you exactly how we got there. Okay, so here's basically the same angle, more or less uh, as this shot I'm about to show you right here which is um, what this garden used to look like. Uh, we came to this garden on December 1st, and uh, it was the woman who lives in the house, and myself, and uh, one of the brahmacharis from the uh, organization I work for, out here digging weeds. And what I wanna draw your attention to is the fact that these weeds are extremely thorny. They're a type of uh, clover, naturally occurring wild clover that uh, pretty much overran this whole place and it would have been absolute suicide to try to walk out in this place without any shoe protection or leg protection uh, or arm protection and we just kept chopping, chopping, chopping and then what we did is we took that material and we kind of rolled it into these big sausages and then we chopped that up which is an extra step. We didn't need to do that in the end, but then we buried all of this material in the ground in the form of lasagna beds, lasagna gardening. And with the lasagna beds, that cycled the nutrient, okay? And I'm not here to tell you that I understand exactly everything that took place in that process. All I can tell you is it was like this before and it's like this now. And, um, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding, the proof is in uh, nature's feedback and nature has given us the feedback that something in what we did worked and that's making all the difference and that's what I want to emphasize in this video okay so here we are you know if you look down here here are my feet bare feet right and this is the same place that we were chopping you know I'll show you it became this mandala garden and it's it's all become grasses grasses and some dicot so dicot monocot you know these are beds this is where we buried all the material uh, in this mandala garden and basically those uh, thorny touch me nots don't exist uh, much anymore out here we might get one percent of the surface area have one come up every once in a while but then we just kind of gently pull it out and throw it in this uh, compost pit in the middle of the mandala garden but as you can see here this is you know look at my feet this is just grass now lots of grass and the grass fixes carbon and you know, we've got our irrigation trenches all through here. We've got the banana circle that was part of all this. And you know, we've got our pumpkin growing and this is all just grassy path. And that's all we did. We just cycled the nutrient and uh, dug up these plants and the garden has been transformed. And even back in this area, this area was uh, uh, not treated in the same way. Like we didn't bury as much material in this area we buried some back here and we buried a, a log along here 
but even that um, has responded well. Now, when we start to get into this kind of more wild area uh, out into zone three, that's when it changes because we didn't treat it in the same way. So um, the nutrient hasn't been cycled in the same way and I'll point out what the difference is there. Okay, so the number one difference back here is I don't go back here without my shoes on because the nutrient hasn't been cycled to the same extent it has in our zone one and two, okay? Zones one and two. So back here, it's still zone three, it's still wild. You're gonna see, I'll show you in the food forest, we're still getting a lot of those touch me not in here. And uh, we've definitely got them here. So this is a mix of um, these touch me not, you see they, how they collapse? They're just riddled with thorns, I don't know if I'm correctly focused for that or not. I mean, focus back down here, as you can see, they're just thorns and thorns and thorns. I would never dream of like trying to pull this. This is too many thorns, you'll cut yourself. I've got scrapes all over my hands from working with these guys, um, but they're just everywhere back here, every, every, everywhere. Now, the difference is the organization I work for sends a tractor back here and they, they chop and drop. They do a chop and drop type of solution here um, before every monsoon they do it. So the material's pretty dried out by then and they, they turn it over, they, they, they till it into the soil, okay? But it's not as effective as what we've done up there. Somehow, by burying the material, by, by, by chopping it, kind of digging it up and then burying it, gets the entire plant body into the ground. And I'm not sure why, I cannot answer the question as to why exactly. All I can tell you is it works up there and it's not working here. And they've been rototilling this area for years, okay? Um, and we just basically have been working this land since December 1st and today is October 3rd. So that's basically 10 months, I guess. Um, and it's, it's drastic, the change is drastic because there were woody touch me nots that were very, very aggressive there and, and they're still here, but they're not there. So you tell me why. Okay, so here I am in the food forest and this is where the spillway starts to happen in the food forest. The uh, irrigation ditch fills up and gently rolls over there. Um, a little while ago, I was able to walk in this food forest much easier than I am, uh, barefoot, e easier than I am now. Now I don't do that as much because look here, again, these guys, this is what was all over our property, these touch me nots. And as I said before, you know, there's a wild, they're like a wild clover. You can see them all through there. They're growing all through this area and they are nitrogen fixing. Okay. But again, we did not do the chop and bury method in this part that we did on the other part. So I'm here to tell you um, that our experience shows that when you have a pesky weed or you have some type of uh, danger, you know, not dangerous, but like, you know, aggressive, like a thorny weed, and you bury its body in the ground, it, it makes a difference. It, it, there's no question about it. I mean, I, I would, you know, not swear on my life, but I would really give a strong testament as to the fact that when you bury that body of that weed in the ground, those nutrients get absorbed, it gets cycled, and it, and it heals the soil and they don't come back. Okay, so that's basically it, short and sweet, uh, barefoot gardening. And uh, you know, like I said, I'm very happy. It's, it's very freeing to uh, be able to go out into the garden without the shoes on because I feel a lot more connected to the earth. And uh, you know, natural farmer, I feel a lot more um, natural. You know, and I believe that uh, bare feet are happy feet, <laughs> you know, especially in the garden. So uh, as always, you know, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it's informative. If you have any questions, like always, please feel free to uh, ask me down below. And uh, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of The Natural Farmer. And uh, hope to see you again real soon. Mm -hmm.